Okay. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> and welcome to United Presbyterian Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. For those of you who are not in Bloomington, I hope you have as beautiful weather as we do. I don't think there's a cloud in the sky. Um, let's see, a couple announcements this morning. Uh, session is going to be Tuesday night around 7.15 on Zoom. You will be getting your emails uh, for the meeting time. Of course, they, the meeting will start at 7.15 because Bible study start, uh, ends around 7, 7.05. Um, that's all the announcements that I have. Are there any other announcements, Alan? Uh, if you ordered script, it's here now, and you can stop by the church tomorrow and pick up your script order. I'll be there between 10 and 3, but call the church first to let me know what time you're coming. And thanks to so many people who are supporting the script program. As you know, the church needs you now more than ever. And uh, we're very heartened by the number of people using script, and we welcome a lot more to use it too. Yeah, thank you everyone, and thank you, Alan. You know, I have one more announcement. Yes. Um, I thought it would be worthy to note that we have another doctor in our congregation, in addition to Dr. Fadi Haddad and Dr. Aline Haddad and Dr. Suhail Haddad, and Dr. Alejandra Haddad, we now have Dr. Fuad Haddad. Aline yes. Haddad's son is now officially an MD. And um, he begins his uh, uh, residency in uh, West Virginia in a week. Isn't it, Fadi, a week? He leaves in a week, but he starts in two weeks. Okay. So we're proud of him. Tell him yeah. that. Very well. much so. Congratulations. Thank you. That's, uh, where is, where is, what is, uh, West Virginia University, is that in, um, he is going to the Charleston, to the Charleston. campus, the, to the, uh, to the, uh, capital. The main campus is in uh, Morgantown. Morgantown, but he'll be in the capital. Yeah. Good, good. All right. All right. Well, congratulations. All right, any other announcements? All right, hearing none, let us worship God. Thank you. 
Amen and thank you, Benjamin. Uh -huh. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As you know, this week, Friday was my birthday. I want to thank God for bringing me to United Presbyterian. I want to thank this congregation for helping me able to helping me to be able to live to the age of <laughs> and and um, I want you to join me now in the call to worship. Call on the name of God. God hears our voice. Our voice. Our voice. Our voice. Even when times are hard, there is hope in our God. Let us worship God, God, God who inspires us and calls us to live creatively. creatively. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us share the peace with one another. Mm -hmm. Peace. 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 peace of Christ be with you. Hey. Join me in the prayer of confession. <clears throat> Eternal God, forgive us for uh, our failing to go and proclaim the gospel to all your children. Like the disciples, we are afraid, we are rejected, we are busy, we are scared. Now all, all our excuses. You call us to travel lightly. We allow ourselves to burden so much. You call us to the good news. You are the sick. Those who are lost. Forgive us for our failures. Forgive us, and us, us, and 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 us, Hear the good news of the gospel. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but members together of the household of God built upon the foundation of the prophets and apostles with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Christ himself is our peace. In his flesh, he has made us into one. Amen. Amen. Our first gospel lesson is John 4, verses 1 through 26. <clears throat> now, Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, uh, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. 
but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you are with now is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. These are the words of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We pick up now in verse 27 through 30, and then following with 39 through 42. Again, please listen for the word of the Lord. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I had ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is, not, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have now heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Benjamin. And thank you for those lovely photos and shots of the sanctuary. It's great to see it. This morning, we are about to embark on a new sermon series. Throughout the next 12 weeks, we will be going on a journey. 
a journey to explore the marginalized, the oppressed, the outsiders. We will take a deep look at how Jesus of Nazareth knocked over social boundaries and walls to make connections <coughs> with people who have been cast out of society. Throughout this series, we will encounter both Jews and Gentiles, women and men, wealthy and poor, powerful and weak, and they will all have one thing in common. All of them are outsiders. So on that note, let's begin our journey as we join Jesus on one of his encounters, as he encounters the woman at the well. Our section in St. John's Gospel has Jesus retreating back to Galilee. His adversaries are noticing that he is beginning to gain more followers than his cousin John. So to avoid confrontation, it is time to move on. Or in Jesus' case, in here, it's more of a retreat, but not like a military retreat where he is running in fear, but kind of a tactical retreat, if you want to think of it in, in that way. He's going back to his homeland. He's going back to Galilee. But instead of crossing the Jordan and traveling up the King's Highway toward Galilee, which was the main passage and road between Galilee and Judea, Jesus chose to go straight north through Samaria. Now, I know I've talked about this uh, a bit in the past, and, and I know this is kind of small. Can everyone see this? Yes. yes. Kind of looks like, as it was always explained to me, a pickle flying a balloon, right? Kind of does look like a pickle flying a balloon. All right, so what we have down, who knows what this body of water is? Dead sea. Dead sea. Yeah, yeah, good body. The Dead, Dead sea. sea. And Dead then sea. this is? The Galilean Sea. sea Galilean. The Galilean Sea, right? And then this squiggly line is? The river of uh, Jordan, Jordan River. Right, the Jordan River. Okay, so people, Jewish people, as they would head down to Judea from Samaria, they would cross Samaria is, uh, uh, excuse me, Galilee is up here, Judah is up here, the region of Samaria is here. So when Galileans would travel, they would cross the River Jordan, take this path called the King's Highway, and then cross back over here and enter the region of Judea. And this is all to avoid the, Samar uh, the Samaritans. Um, so, but Jesus decides that that's not the route he is going to take. He's not going to do that. And this, remember, <laughs> is a way of avoidance. Now, why would Jews avoid their neighbors so much? Well, we have to look at the history of Samaria to really get an understanding of why people, why these people did not get along. And um, I hate to say it, it is a pretty early form of racism, and it really and truly is. Samaria <clears throat> is a region that did not always exist within this piece of the Mediterranean world. This goes all the way back to the Assyrian invasion somewhere around the year 722 BC. As the Assyrians came down and eventually uh, destroyed uh, the 10 tribes of Israel, right? The Northern Kingdom is obliterated. The Assyrians had a tactic. And one of their tactics was to take people from their conquered regions 
and kind of move them all over the place, right? If you want to think of a way, a visual, you know, you would like taking a, a deck of cards and kind of just, you know, moving them all over the table to help shuffle a new deck. That's kind of what they did. They would basically take people from all of their various conquered lands and then put them all over the place, drop them in places that they would not be familiar with. Now, what this would do was to keep down nationalism, right? It's kind of hard for people to revolt against your absentee landlord when what do you revolt against? What do you look back? What is your heritage? What is your one thing to grasp on? And it was actually a tactic that worked for the Assyrians. So now you have to fast forward from 722 BC all the way to the first century AD, right? First century of our Lord. Now what happens? Now you have centuries and centuries and centuries of people living in this area from mixed heritages and uh, mixed nationalities and ethnic groups and tribal groups. So you have some people there who probably came from Jewish roots. And you have some people there, lots of people there, from roots from all over the place. So over time, what happens is a new thing is created. And that group is called the Samaritans, or the Samaritans, excuse me. So now the Samaritan people have formed, right? They are kind of like their Jewish neighbors, but they are kind of not like their Jewish neighbors. And the Jews who lived in Judea and Galilee did not care for them. They saw them as uh, half-bloods, half-breeds. Um, they saw them as something else. And there was um, a strong dislike for the Samaritans, all right? So with knowing this history, it is interesting that a Jewish rabbi like Jesus tells us that he had to go through Samaria, right? And it's interesting in John's gospel because it actually says had to go, H-A-D, as mm -hmm. if he had an appointment to meet. He arrived in a town called Sychar at Jacob's well around midday. Tired from his journey, he sat to rest by this well. It is then when an unnamed Samaritan woman came to draw some water from the well. Jesus begins a conversation. Give me a drink. And this is a conversation that will change this woman's life and her village's life forever. Because it is then that Jesus offers the woman living water. Now, the conversation we heard within Alan's reading this morning, and it abruptly ends when the disciples returned astonished, astonished that Jesus was speaking with a woman, never mind a Samaritan woman. But the woman leaves, and it's interesting because the woman leaves without her water. She came for water. But she leaves her jar behind and goes back to her village to talk to her people. Now, this conversation held between Jesus and this woman is so important on so many, so many levels. To begin, we have to believe that the placement of this story in John's gospel is intentional, right? It is not an accident that this, which appears in chapter 4, fits nicely after Jesus' meeting with Nicodemus in chapter 3. As both chapters deal with the concept of eternal life. 
Nicodemus, for some background, a teacher of the law, he is an insider, right? He is a Jew of Jew, as Paul would use that term. He is supposed to understand Jesus' teaching. He does not get it right away as Jesus tries to explain to him eternal life using the illustration of being born again or being born anew, being born from above. Now, although good old Nick doesn't seem to get it right away, he does kind of get it in the end. Now, when we think of Nicodemus, we must understand Nicodemus as someone who is raised within privilege. He is respected by his community. He is classically educated in the law and Palestinian Jewish customs. In stark contrast, we have the Samaritan woman, a marginalized outsider. And yet this woman, after going back and forth with Jesus a few times, she seems to get it right away. Nicodemus returns back to his life in secrecy under the cover of darkness, but the seed was planted by Jesus. His faith develops over time throughout John's gospel to where in the end he is there to help out Joseph of Arimathea in the preparation of Jesus' body. But again, in contrast, we have the woman who goes back to her village right away and tells many of what occurred. We are told that many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Jesus does not advise the woman to tell anybody. She does it on her own. All of this over a little spiritual water. It's an amazing thing. The Samaritan woman drinks in to Jesus' message. Now, in a passage that we could go in numerous directions, I'm going to pull out a few points to kind of follow the theme of this sermon series. First, Jesus of Nazareth is continually breaking down social boundaries within his earthly ministry. And this is a beautiful example of one of those <laughs> times. Jesus here crossed two cultural boundaries. One, he associates with a woman. And two, he associates with a Samaritan woman. And you can almost feel it when the disciples return to him in John chapter 4, as they probably walk up looking at him like, uh, why is Jesus talking to that woman? Why is the rabbi talking to her? Again and again, we witness that Jesus does not care about the boundaries or margins that we as humans choose to erect. The second point I would like to bring up is the fact that we need to follow the example of the Samaritan woman to be bold like her in sharing our faith and the gospel of Christ. Because it is important to note that it is an outsider that takes on the role of perhaps the very first missionary in Jesus's ministry. And there really is no other way to describe her. She is a missionary. She takes the message of Jesus directly to her village and she begins to tell it on the mountain <laughs> she brings his words directly to her people and not only do the people believe some people believe because of her word then she brings them all out to meet him and not only that now people are believing because of what jesus is saying and then they go ahead and invite jesus to stay for a couple of nights, and he does. And this all 
for a group of outsiders. As Christ reaches out to all people, regardless of what we think, so we must respond by also reaching out to people, sharing our witness and about the love of Christ. We need to be intentional not to pass judgment on those whom we think are outside of God's grace. It is not our job to be gatekeepers. We do not get to decide who is in and who is out. That is a job even as a pastor I would not want. Because there are many that can be described as a modern day Samaritan. We have plenty of people in our world who still live under systems of apartheid. Those judged because of their lifestyle, those judged because of their extreme poverty, those judged because of their culture, because of what they eat, where they live, the color of their skin, the shape of their eyes. We must always be reminded on how Jesus dealt with so-called outsiders with open arms, compassion, and inclusivity. The Spirit of God is alive and well, still reaching out and still changing lives one at a time. And as our unnamed, marginalized woman goes, one village at a time. Next week, we will continue our sermon series on the outsiders. So I hope you all come back as we continue our series. Amen. Well, as a tradition that we have started, in the last sermon series, I think we should continue it as we move further and affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. And now you should all be experts in the Apostles' Creed, so um, expect a pop quiz sometime in the future. Uh, what do we believe? I believe in God, Amen. the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty. Almighty. Maker, Maker of heaven, heaven, heaven and earth, and, earth. And, and in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ his, his only Son, 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 our Lord, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, he descended, he descended into hell. 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 The third day he rose again, rose again from the dead. From the dead. The dead. He ascended into he heaven, heaven and, and sitteth on the right hand, hand of God, 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 God the Father Almighty. Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and, and the dead. And the dead. I, believe I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy, Ghost, Holy, Ghost, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the, the communion, communion of saints, saints the, the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. All right. We have now come to the point within our worship service where we are able to lift our concerns, to share uh, prayers and joys with each other and lift them up to God. What lies heavy on your hearts this morning? What prayer requests would you like to lift up? What joys would you like to celebrate and share with each other? So... What would you like to lift, list in prayer? John, I would like to lift up all of the police force across this country. Okay. I can't, I just can't imagine how demoralizing and how thankless they must feel they're thankful in their jobs. And I just think that we need to lift up the police force, the um, firemen, the, the people that come to protect us to help us. I, I feel really bad for what's going on with our police force. Okay. I want to thank you. Thanks, as I said earlier, um, 
I want to thank God that I'm allowed to be a part of this congregation and everything the people in this congregation have um, done for me. <clears throat> As a friend from my hometown who's now passed away said to me several years ago, this is for heaven's sakes, Alan, if it weren't for the people in that church, you'd be dead. And I, I agree with her. I also want to say, I want prayers <clears throat> of thankfulness. My two cousins in Chicago and the four cousins in Northwest Indiana that had COVID-19 have all now recovered and are all home and had excellent medical care. Um, in Florida, my Cousin Aline's husband, Gene, uh, passed away late Wednesday night. And um, <clears throat> he was moved from ICU to their home. And he died in their home with um, both of their uh, daughters and their uh, daughter's spouses and his wife with him amid prayer. And the funeral is going to be a Wednesday at Trinity Baptist Church in uh, Ocala, Florida. So I'd like you to keep uh, Aline and, and her daughters, their husbands, and their children uh, in your prayers for next week as they mourn his loss. And thank you for praying for him for the last two or three weeks also. John, another joy might be... Um... There's another doctor that wasn't mentioned, a new graduate, and that's Michael Turk. A little farther removed from our congregation, but uh, nevertheless, we know who he is. Wow. That's cause for celebration. Yeah. And he he's also graduated from Medical school, is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Another joy, John, is that um, this week Bill passed his Linux Plus certification, which allows him to do course development now. Fantastic. I have a joy as well. Go ahead, Darren. Um, those of you that that have attended the uh, dessert auction in the past know that Melanie has a coworker and a good friend named Margaret, who usually contributes some delicious desserts uh, every year. Mm -hmm. And um, she and her her husband looks like Santa Claus, if you remember him coming to the dessert auction. Um, their middle daughter's name is Tara, T A R A, and uh, yesterday she and her fiance Bobby got married. Um, at uh, Melanie's sister's uh, a wedding barn across the street from our house. So um, I would like to um, uh, celebrate their marriage and wish them well in their new journey. Yeah. It's always good to have some good news in, in rough times. That's wonderful news to celebrate. Thank you for sharing that. John, I'd like to lift up John's tomorrow for his um, cataract surgery. Hope, hopefully everything will go well. Yeah, and it's the next two Mondays, correct? Yes. Okay. Tomorrow and, and then the following Monday. Okay. Let me see you over there. I have a appointment with Dr. McKee tomorrow. If I can see, I'll see you. <laughs> oh, it's good to know that your sense of humor is still there, Johnny. <laughs> it is. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely, Colleen. Thank you. John, can we keep in mind, May? She's in the hospital. Yeah. Which oh. was due to go home yesterday again. She had a fever. I oh. don't know what's going to happen. Just keep an hour. Thank you. We could also um, keep my dad in mind. He has a he needs a root canal and a bridge repair. Uh, it's gonna giving him a lot of pain. Where I was mm. see my parents last weekend. Um, uh, they are are doing better. My mother was having a lot of pain issues, but it, it looked like there was an arthritis 
flare up that was responsible for that. So she's feeling a lot better. Um, but my dad is feeling a lot worse. Um, and it's just not certain what can be done because he's in the third round of his treatments. So um, we just need clarity and a path forward and healing for my dad and lots of different ways. And I'm also thankful um, my best friend has had three mini strokes. And best friends since third grade. Uh, they did find out what was causing it. She, one of our carotid arteries is totally blocked. So for, um, you know, uh, a resolution and full health for her. And her name is Barb. Barb is in Barbara? Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. Okay. But she's out of the hospital, so. Good. Around and has relatively few um, side effects, considering. Got it. Thank you, Michelle. Any other prayer requests? Virginia, can we pray for your voice? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just not. I don't want you to strain your vocal cords. Okay. John, can you keep in mind Mar Barbara's friend's father, who was given a diagnosis of weeks to live? Yeah. He's also a minister, I'm told. And let's not forget uh, Mary Mull Ryan. Okay. Let's pray for all the people that uh, we're used to seeing in church but haven't seen on the computer, like the Hamels and uh, other people, uh, mm -hmm. Betty, uh, Mary Lou and Billy, etc. Yeah. Any other prayers? All right. Well, let us prepare our hearts, our souls, our minds, our innermost selves to encounter God through the gift of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, we, we come to you and we are thankful that we are counted as your heirs, children, friends. Lord, we lift you up, and we just lift up our hearts as we pray to you for our world. Lord, we pray for the people of our world. As we see so many examples from our Bible of insiders and outsiders, Let us understand that outsiders do not have to be people that are outside our circles, outside of our nation. They could be friends and family members. Outsiders come in all shapes and forms. Let us continually learn from your word that outsiders should be loved, should be brought in should be cared for and comforted just like everybody else. So let us learn to truly love and care for all of your children. Lord, we pray for our earth. We pray for the nations of our world. We pray for those people who are vulnerable 
within our world, especially during times of pandemic. We also pray for people who must deal with other horrors and evils, whether it be violence or war, natural disaster, hunger, or pain. Lord, we, end, we ask for the end of evils like bigotry and hatred and apartheid. Please teach us to look at the other as we look at your face. Let us see your image as we look in the face of the other. So we learn how to treat people with dignity and respect and love. Lord, we lift up our nation to you. And our nation, we also deal with heartache and hard times. We are also dealing with pandemic and unrest. So Lord, we pray for our government. We pray for our leaders, our president, our courts. We pray for those people who are elected to create and enforce laws. We ask that they be fair to all people living within our land. We pray for those men and women who serve overseas, whether within our military or whether within our, the Peace Corps or your mission field. We pray for these people who must be away from the familiar, friends, family, loved ones. We pray that even though they might feel alone, that your spirit and your presence be felt. Lord, we pray for our land. We pray for those people who are on the front lines fighting this pandemic. We lift up our medical field. We lift up doctors and surgeons and nurses who are working tirelessly. We lift up and thank you for hospitals. So we thank you for aides and staff people who are keeping hospitals and, and offices up and running. We thank you for those people who now work to clean and to disinfect, and their workload is doubled. Please be with them as we thank you for their work to try to keep the spread down. Lord, we ask that researchers be given the strength and the imagination and the inspiration to find cures, to find vaccines, to find treatments, to help prevent the passing of this virus or to cure it or to lessen the effects of it. Lord, we thank you for those people who have been working since the beginning, people in the restaurant industry, people in our government, people in our postal service, people in the grocery stores to make sure that we are fed. We thank you for those individuals, people that we have come to know as unsung heroes. Lord, we thank you for our community of faith. We thank you for Bloomington. We thank you for this church. And as we look for ways to hopefully soon reopen our church building, we just ask you to be with our elders, especially on Tuesday night, as we discuss and talk about ways to do so. As we talk and discuss about ways to continue digital worship for people who are more vulnerable and should not come back to the church building right away. But we need to make sure that this community of faith stays connected. All of this community of faith needs to stay connected. So please be with our elders this upcoming Tuesday night as we discuss upcoming plans. And Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers now as we lift up our personal prayers, those that are close to our hearts, those that, that affect us the most. So we ask, Lord, please hear our prayers, and we are. We are comforted because we know our prayers do not fall upon deaf ears. Lord, we lift up the people within our communities, our societies, our, our nation, who are out there protecting us, 
We lift up police officers. We lift up first responders and firefighters. Lord, it is, we know that there are people out there that do bad things. But we also understand that the vast majority does not. So we pray for our police officers. We pray for those who might be depressed or, or frustrated because of some of a lot of the negative feedback right now. So we just ask you to be with them, encourage them to keep doing a good job, to let them know that they are appreciated for what they do. And we thank them for protecting us and serving us and caring for their communities, which are our communities. So Lord, we just lift up these people to you to just keep their spirits high and, and let them understand that we do appreciate the good job that they do. Lord, we lift up Alan, who is such an important piece of our community of faith, who thanks God for the church and, uh, and him being here and finding this body of faith. We also lift up a, a, a prayer of joy for his cousins who are doing well. We also lift up prayers for the family of Gene Lightfoot, who passed away in his home from COVID-19. We pray for his wife, Aline, and her family as now they mourn the loss of their patriarch. So we just pray for the family of Gene Lightfoot, that his life be celebrated, that his family find a way to celebrate his life and to begin the mourning process and to, to, to give them that space to do so. We lift up Michael Turk, who has also graduated from medical school, as the Turks are so close um, to, the, to the United Presbyterian Church family. So we celebrate with the Turks as we celebrate Michael's huge accomplishment. And Lord, we lift up Bill Warden as he passed his Linux Plus um, certification exam, and now he can do so much more. And we are so thankful for Bill and all of his skills, and now he's adding more to that. And um, we are thankful for Bill and uh, what this will mean for his career. Lord, we celebrate with Tara and Bobby as they got married yesterday. Let us celebrate with this new couple as they celebrate their marriage and as they begin their journey in life as one. So let us celebrate with them, this couple, as they have uh, bonded together. Lord, we lift up John Swanson, especially for these next two Mondays as he is going in for cataract surgery. We just ask you to be with John, to remove anxieties he may have, to keep him calm, and to be with his surgeon as, as within these next two Mondays that they, uh, act to remove cataracts from his eyes, allow this, the procedures to go well and the healing to take place so John can see more clearly. Lord, we lift up May Hamadi as she is still in the hospital. And so we pray for May that, that she um, continue to get better so she can go home and be with her family there in Lebanon. We also ask you to be with May's family outside of Lebanon, especially Aline here within our community. Allow our prayers to be heard, and uh, we just ask that she be strengthened so she can go home. We lift up prayers for Michelle's parents, uh, Dennis and Cece. We pray for Dennis as he is, uh, even as he is undergoing chemotherapy treatment, you know, he's having issues with his teeth and he does need a root canal and a bridge and some bridge work. Lord, we just ask that this is, is able to take place and that um, his pain can subside, especially within his mouth. We just ask that the, uh, the chemo treatments do what they are designed to do and that, uh, that he can get better. And we also lift up Cece, Michelle's mom, and we are glad to hear that she is doing better recently. So just please be with them. Um, throughout these trials and uplift their spirits and allow them to, en to enjoy each other and to enjoy their family. Lord, we lift up, uh, also we lift up Michelle's friend Barb, who has had a series of mini strokes 
um, and is, is home currently right now, but we are also glad that they have found the reason for the mini strokes as a, one of her carotid arteries is clogged. So we just ask that um, her doctors are able to, to figure a way to go ahead and, and get that clog removed and so she can go on uh, without having these mini strokes. So please be with Barb throughout this period of time um, and, and be with those who are now working on ways to uh, help remedy the mini strokes. Lord, we lift up prayers for Virginia and her voice, that the healing can continue to take place and that she can get her voice back. So please be with her through this uncomfortable time and place your healing hands upon her to, uh, so she can regain her voice. Lord, we lift up Sue's sister, Barbara, and her friends for her friend's father, um, who has been given weeks to live. We know that we have heard that he is in the ministry. And uh, Lord, we just ask that as a person of faith who has worked in your service, um, be given some rest. Lord, we just ask that you be with him during this period perhaps of anxiety or stress that uh, must not be easy to be given this sentence. Allow him to spend time with family members. Allow him to spend time with friends. Allow him to feel the love of those around him. Allow him to come to terms and be at peace. We just ask that he be given the dignity and the ability to go and spend these last days with those he loves the most. Lord, we also lift up Mary Moryan as she is also undergoing um, cancer treatments. We ask that they also uh, do as they are designed to treat the cancer and to, to bring some healing to her body. <clears throat> And Lord, we also pray for the people within our congregation that we do not see on a regular basis on Zoom, whether during our worship service or our Bible study or our prayer meeting. Lord, we just ask that they are contacted, that they know that they are still a part of this congregation, that they are loved, and they are important to us. And uh, we just ask that as we move closer to the date of reopening, um, that we can begin the slow process of, of returning to some normalcy within the life of United Presbyterian Church. Lord, and we ask for peace throughout our land. We, la we ask for love and justice. We ask for peaceful resolution. We ask that you be with us through all the discord and confusion and pandemic. Let us always be reminded that even when we cannot see you, you are always with us. And now as we prepare to close this prayer, let us use the words that you taught your followers so many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, remember that if you are able, please keep your congregation in your thoughts. Um, uh, we thank you all who have um, kept the giving coming and kept your congregation supported. We are very, very thankful for that. Um, so, you know, we just ask to always keep us in your mind. And, and we always thank you for your, uh, your monetary, monetary support. Um, as we 
prepare to go back into our worlds or back into our living rooms and kitchens. <laughs> go and know that we have a God who is bigger than any social construct humanity could ever erect. That as there are people within our world that have always been marked as outsiders, that have been marginalized, that have been oppressed, that we serve a God that is so big that God loves all. We look at the ministry of Jesus and we will be taking a deeper look at the ministry of Jesus and just how Jesus will reach out into all of these corners, into the margins, and take these people by hand and walk them back into society, helping them hold their heads up high to walk with dignity, to know that their lives are valued, to know that they are loved by God, and that these human constructs are merely houses of cards to be blown down. So love your neighbors, all of your neighbors, and go forth in peace. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you all for being here this morning and worshiping with us. Uh, remember my elders out there, my clerk, my treasurer, that we are meeting Tuesday evening after Bible study. Uh, Don, I sent you an email this morning. Um, so check your email um, with the stuff for session. And uh, I wish you all a happy Sunday and a good week to you. Come. Thank you. Have a good week. Later. Later. Yeah, God bless you week. all. Bye. Bye. You are loved Bye. by your pastor and by God. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>